Alrighty, well, morning everybody. Uh, well, I was uh, browsing YouTube and, hang on just a second. Okay. But uh, I was browsing YouTube and this video here came up. So um, I haven't I haven't listened to all of this. I think I listened to maybe like the first 15, 20 seconds of it. And I just, I kind of came to the conclusion that I, I probably want to do commentary on this. So, but um. It's called, It's Not a Crime to Play Top-Tier Characters in Fighting Games. Um, which, which again, I found to be, I found to be, uh, this is a topic that I haven't seen in a long time, but I came from, uh, I remember back, uh, like in the, when I started watching, like, Evo tournaments and whatnot, like the early to mid, two, or early to mid 2010s, where a lot, where a lot of people were picking Vega, who's like a super OP character. Um, I think there's, I think there might have been, um, there might have been other OP characters too, but it just, but to kind of, to kind of throw in my own two cents on this, um, but I am, I am going to listen to this whole video and do commentary on it, but, uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw in, um, throw in my point of view on this. Um, on one end, no, it's, it's not a crime. It's, it's not a, I mean, I mean, if, if, if. I mean, if, if if it's a character that he wants to play, he has every right to play it. But um, I would probably also say that if there was anybody, I mean, how can I put this? It's not the player's fault that the character is top tier. If anything, it's the game devs that are to blame for that. You know, they're the ones to blame for uh, making a character that's too powerful, or you know, they're you know they. They gave that character a mechanic that was so OP that uh, everybody and their dog wants to use it now because they're all just steamrolling through all the, you know all their opponents, that kind of thing. The game devs are the ones to blame for that, not for the players. So that that's kind of mine. But uh, but on the other hand, though, yeah, it does it does make for pretty uh, for a pretty boring landscape, though. I mean, again, I I've got I've watched my share of Evo. Like in the, in the 2010s, where everybody and their dog was picking Vega. You know, I mean, I understand it's a tournament, at, and you absolutely have to win. But you know, from a from a viewer like myself, it it makes for it makes for some pretty bleak viewing, though. So, and then um, I guess um, I guess a little a little a little test I'd probably have for for a particular player, like I guess uh, Soul. I guess Soul is the uh, undisputed king of uh, of Guilty Gear Strive right now. Um, my little little test I'd give to a person would be, uh, what if they nerfed the living hell out of Soul? Are you still gonna play him, or are you gonna go suddenly switch allegiances over to to, for an example, this guy here wearing the blindfold? I don't know his name, but maybe. All of a sudden, they decided to nerf his damage by 50, or they decided to buff his damage by 50%, and they nerfed Saul here by, nerfed Saul's damage by 50%. I mean, are you now going to drop Saul and go play this guy now? So, I mean, if if that's the case, then yeah, I'd probably cry foul on that. You know, but on the other hand, if you play Saul because you enjoy playing Saul, and you're going to stick with this guy through thick and thin, no matter what nerfs he gets, gets then I got no problems with that. So, that's uh, that's one level of it. Um, the other level. Um, and, I mean, having, I haven't, and I've only, I've only, I've only played a few uh, fighting games recently. Um, my little history, um, I haven't consistently played a fighting game in like 30 years, like since the 90s. And I've only recently taken them up, so. So on another hand, on the other hand too, because I'm so new to the fighting games. I on another another hand is I really don't have much of a dog in the fight. You can be a total shit tier character and you still beat me. I mean I'm that much of a beginner. So on one hand I don't. Top tier or low tier don't matter. You're gonna beat me no matter what, no matter what character you play. So. So again, I don't really have much of a dog in this fight. Um, thirdly, uh, the few, like the, I would probably say, uh, for 
kind of a related yet unrelated note. Um, I have, in the mid-2000s, I played a game called RuneScape for about six years. Um, how can I put this? Unlike most other MMO MMO games out there, um, in, in RuneScape, if two players are fighting one monster, whoever dealt the most damage to that monster got credit for the kill. He got the drop and everything. So if you're this little level one guy trying to beat on this monster and some douchebag just comes, some high level douchebag comes in, whoosh, takes him out with one hit and he gets credit for the, uh, gets the drop and everything. Uh, yeah, that is very infuriating. Now, and then, and, and, and then the cherry on top would be, he kind of like lolls at you or, you know, calls you a noob or whatever and, you know, laugh, you know, laughs at you and then takes off. That I definitely have a problem with. So, carry over, so carry over here to recently. Um, if, for example, if say, if say I was competent enough, competent enough to where, you know, I could probably beat a low tier character, but still have problems with high tier character. You, you kind of get the idea of what I mean here. If um, if I can, if so, if I'm getting my butt beat by Saul here, this high tier character, um, I guess uh, my opinion on that depends on what his opinion like after he beats me. I mean, you know, if he's like, if he's still respectful, you know, hey man, bet you know, GG, better luck, you know. You know, take care of seeing, you know, etc. But, you know, if he's not being a total asshole about the victory, then I got no problems with being beaten by a high-tier character. Now, on the other hand, if he's just acting all like, <laughs> and another goes down, man, you little bitch. <laughs> oh, man, you all suck. Something like that, I'd have a problem with. Because, again, he's beating me with a high, you know, he's kicking my ass with a high-tier character, and he's acting all... Or kind of like, kind of like the the rugby match in uh, Monty Python's Meeting of Life, if you if you've ever seen that. But I, I don't want to spoil it. But that that atti that attitude there. If if they've got that, then yes, I'd have a problem with that. But again, you know, if they're being respectful, you know, they say, "Hey, good game, man. Uh, wish you luck in the future." You know that kind of thing. I got no problems being beaten by a high tier. So, but I, uh, for the most part, I've said my piece. And something I oh, and I also forgot to mention too. I'm in, I'm kind of a kind of a bit of a hurry to rush through this. I still have my pseudo cast I have to do yet. Oh, and um, uh, I also forgot to mention too is uh, I'll be uh, I'll be drinking uh V8 Energy, uh peach mango flavored. So. Hello and welcome. This is Rufflemonger. And my friends, today we're talking about top tier. I gotta pause. Games. I forgot to do a sound check on this, so let me uh, back it up a bit. Hello and welcome. This is Rufflemonger. And my friends, today we're talking about top tiers in fighting games. Perhaps in a Guilty Gear Strive context, since this is the new hot game and all, and we definitely have a specific top tier to talk about. Uh, but we're talking about top tiers <laughs> and in the fact that simply it's All right. okay. Okay, I gotta make I gotta make yet another sound adjustment. This time it's gotta be in my headphones. Alright, so let me check this. Top tier characters. I know, what a concept, right? So specifically with the launch of Guilty Gear Strive, uh, I've been seeing a lot of negativity towards some of the strongest characters in the game. And it's a bit more voracious than it usually is. It's always there. Um, he kind of, yeah, that did kind of have that did kind of have me curious there too. Um, I mean, either that Saul must, I mean, Saul must be so powerful that no other player has a fighting chance in hell against this guy. I mean, if it, if the um, if the salt is that much. That's what I'm guessing, but I only played uh, Guilty Gear Strive for a super brief period of time. Uh, basically, my computer can't handle it, especially when I'm trying to stream it. Uh, my computer is a potato, so it it can't really play a game like like this and stream at the same time. So I had to put the kibosh on it. Sure, don't get me wrong. Every fighting game is always there, but specific characters are getting a lot of hate, and uh, Soul Bad Guy, specifically above the rest, seems to be the target. 
Simply put, for a lot of people, the top tier character in whatever game we're playing, on top of being, you know, stronger, is more fun of a character due to the fact that they are stronger. It is generally not fun to have a weak character. Sometimes you run to a character that is fun regardless of being low tier, but most... Like for me, that is T-Hawk. He traditionally suffers, but he's super unique and nobody will... And this kind of goes back to what I was saying a while ago, too. Um, if you're playing, I mean, if you're playing a high tier character right now, will you still be playing that same character when they nerf him? So, I mean, if you're, if you're, again, if you're staying with that character through thick and thin because you like that character, then I got no problems with that. And the only time I probably take issue with it is if, um, if he, if your character gets nerfed, but this person's character over here gets buffed, and you, you drop him, and you go over here to this powerful character, then yeah, I'd have a problem with that. A little bit on the lame side, but again, it's it's just like uh, Rupal's saying, though, too. I mean, there's... If it's the, you know, if it's the character that you've, you've stuck beside, uh, I guess, for him, for him, it's T-Hawk. Um, for me, I don't... Um, again, I'm... I'm pretty new to fighting games. I've played a few of them here over the months. But I don't really have a... I think uh, the most consistent i played is probably um, Dragon Ball Fighters. I don't... I My main used to be Master Roshi, but mainly because we're all, we're almost alike. But aside from that, I... I mean, again, I'm new. I, can, I mean, I'm going to suck with all the characters, so... Not much point in having a main... Time, the top tier characters are a lot of the time more fun to play so people necessarily shouldn't be vilified for doing it. yes like for an example myself uh, in injustice one i played superman superman was top tier as top tier gets just about uh i'm okay and this is kind of a drawback to some of these uh youtubers if they um when they're editing these videos they they really need to keep the text to a minimum unless they can um if they could stay in this uh scene for lack of a better word for a long period of time long enough for me to actually uh to where i don't have to do what i'm doing now and stopping the stopping the video and having to read soul is literally hot garbage compared to what superman could do in injustice one you know i'm, I'm a pretty slow reader so so yeah, this is kind of a little, kind of a little pet peeve of mine. But to be fair, um, some of my favorite YouTubers like Emperor Lemon often do this as well. They'll be um, don't you know they'll the video will be going, it'll be switching scenes and pictures and whatnot. But yet, the text that they actually put down on top of it isn't doesn't stay up there long enough for me to read all of it, which forces me to have to put it on pause, read the text, and then. Move right along. I'm talking, you can't do moves from full screen on block. And you can he can still punish you from full screen blocking, because that's how crazy he was, right? And a lot of people, you know, there was definitely a lot of hate tossed Superman's way. And me, I found him to be a blast to play. It also helped Superman is by a large margin my favorite comic book character. So when I got my hands on the game, I was gonna play And here we go. Who oh, hates Superman literally? Okay, but yeah, it's anyway, like I was saying. And the fact that he was super tippity The text ain't gonna stay up there long enough for me to read it, so I have to pause it. I had tons of fun playing Superman in Injustice One, and I got a lot of crap for playing him, to be sure, right? And over the course of the game's life, I definitely got a lot of hate mail sent my way, specifically because of my character choices. <laughs> it wasn't too fun. And, and again, you know, from you know, and then going going off of this. I almost want to say that it really is the fault of the complainers then. Or, it, it's kind of hard for me to explain, but again, the ones that are complaining, they must be competent enough in fighting games to know what's be, what's high tier and what's low tier. So, but most of the most of the complaining about tiers goes over my head. I mean, again, I'm a beginner. I'm pretty much a beginner at fighting games. 
even your lowest tier character is still gonna beat me easily. So. I just wanted to play my favorite character. Now, don't get me wrong. You can still blame your losses on the top tier. Come on, Walter. Well, I'll keep doing it too, right? Um. And uh, yep. But again, it's it's down to the opponent too. If the opponent if the opponent that beats you with a high tier character, I mean, if he if it's just strictly business, for lack of a better phrase, I mean, if he just you know plays it, beats you, and then you know you know chats like, good game, see you next time, and you part the ways, got no problems with that. But again, if he's like if he's like just steamrolls you and he's like celebrating, yeah, yeah, I'm the best, I'm the fucking master, yeah, you know, with a high tier character, then yes, I would have a problem with that. So, but again, it's it's down to attitude. I, I didn't lose. I only lost because he played Soul. Come on, right? That's it. But otherwise, you know, don't fault someone for playing a character they find uh, just more fun than some of the other characters that are in the game. And, of course, there will be many patches, balance patches, that is, over the course of the game's lifetime. What is today's top tier will be tomorrow's bottom tier. What is today's bottom tier could be tomorrow's top tier, so on and so forth, right? It is an ever-shifting paradigm. Today's soul is brain dead, blah, 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 blah. If Kai gets enough patches, oh my god, Kai is brain dead, blah, 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 right? So uh, don't just necessarily point fingers at someone because... If the character gets nerfed, uh, and then they're no longer top tier, it makes it kind of look like a jerk. Now, if they immediately drop the character and switch to whoever it is the new top tier, maybe you can make a little bit of fun of them, I guess. Yes. But don't blame them for playing one specific character. Yes. And in the end, one of the biggest things you can do to help yourself if you don't like a particular top tier is hit up training mode. Learn what the character yep. can do. The more knowledge you have against the character... Um, this is a... Um, as one who's been, a uh, was a pretty big was a huge fan of uh, Magic the Gathering. Um, I played it a ton, not always with other people, but like offline. And I mean, I love messing with the cards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But basically, Magic the Gathering, I played it a lot, and that was one lesson that I actually learned: no deck is completely unbeatable. I mean, yes, I mean the deck you the deck you're currently using might not have a chance in hell against this the deck that this person's using. I mean. That happens a lot, but it's not like this deck here is completely 100% airtight, you know, or like nothing can beat it, which is, that's totally untrue. Same thing here. I think he's kind of saying the same thing too. But again, I've never, I mean, again, I've only played Guilty Gear Strive for a very brief period of time. I think maybe one day. And I, most of that was just spent in the tutorial and training mode. But I'm, uh, but I'm guessing, um, Saul's probably the same way. He's not completely 100% beatable. You, he can be beaten. You know, may, if you, you know, if you're the right, you know, if if you're a great player, uh, you know, maybe a match. You know, you kind of get the idea, though. Well, I'm sure he's got an Achilles heel. The match gets a lot less rough, right? Ignorance can breed hate. Knowledge can help reduce the hate. Yep. So if you're struggling. Be it against Soul, be it against Chip, be it against me, or whatever character you're struggling against. Hit training mode, you might find life might get a little bit easier for you as well. So in the end, yep. uh, I don't know specifically who needed to hear this, but it is okay to yes. play top tier. It's not the end of the world if someone's picking a top tier character and you didn't. Let them live their life. Uh, especially because the way fighting games work nowadays, almost nobody's top tier forever. Yes. That's from Excetrion and MK11. Uh, <laughs> and get a little bit more normal. Again, I, again, I don't know. Um, my default answer is uh, if uh, if I'm watching a tournament, and if I see uh, if I see like a certain character being played a lot, like uh, I think he was right on that. Some of the the MK11 tournaments that I watched, Cetrion was used fairly often. Um, Liu Kang was used fairly often. Um, Garrus was used quite a bit. Um, Aaron Black was used quite a bit. So I'm guessing if I see those, if I see those characters, like, being used constantly, then that just gives me the impression that these must be the top tier characters. Because, again, it's a tournament, and you, you, winning's pretty much a requirement, so... Um, I did say this um, a few years ago. Um, 
I think I was streaming Final Fantasy XIV, but this would probably be very, very tough to pull off. Um, but I would love to see a style points tournament where um you would um you know, it's it's a points based tournament where uh, you still get one for a win, zero for a loss, but aside from that you would be awarded style points based on which character you won with. Like if you if for example, if, if say if you won with Saul Whoops you would get zero style points. But um if you won with say Eno, the guitar playing girl, um, I'm under the impression that she's like really trashed here. But uh, I can't I can't remember where I read it, where uh, where I saw it. But yeah, she's like too slow, etc. But anyway, if you if you uh, if you win with Eno, then you get you get ten style points. So because you know you're you're winning your matches with like a super hard you know a super hard to use character, you know. But again, there's there's too many there's too many th too many requirements that would have to be met in order for it to be a for it to be a possibility. I don't really have time to say it here because again, I still need to get going on my pseudo cast as well. So, so I'll just go ahead and I'll finish this out. And they'll work with the rest of the cast. So, anyways, my friends, that's just uh, my thoughts on the matter. I uh, look forward to Gold Lewis Week upcoming. And if you watch this video after Gold Lewis Week, hey, oh, theory on that. And that uh, theory on that, yeah. When Gold Lewis comes out, my guess is they're going to make him super powerful, like even more powerful than Saul. Just for mainly for promotional reasons, just to keep just to get people playing the game, get more or especially more people playing him. Again, kind of promotional reasons. And then but once um but once the um what's the word I'm looking for? But once the uh, once the popularity starts cooling off and all that, they'll probably nerf them back down to the rest of the people. So, at least that's my theory. But, but anyway, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here. Um, I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say, and I'm sure, uh, and I'm pretty sure uh, Rufal Monger here has probably said all the things he's wanted to say about it too. So, uh, but thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate that, and see you all next time. Take care.